Hi guys, it's Amy. I'm here with another video for those of you who like furniture painting and furniture flipping. I've got some chalk painting hacks for you today, and I'm going to try to just dive in and do quickly as many as I can that are just little tricks and tips that'll make it go faster or work better for you. That said, the first hack I'm going to tell you is actually something that takes a little longer up front, but will save you time in the long run, and that is about prepping your piece. What I want to remind you of is that if you don't clean it properly, there, there will be things that come back to haunt you. They'll like bleed through and cause you a lot of grief and will end up taking so much longer. So I know a lot of us creative types, we just want to cut to the chase. Every time I have a new piece of furniture that I'm envisioning, a new color, or a new finish on it, I cannot wait to just get in there and do it. So I, I really have to work on this one because I don't like to spend a ton of time prepping. That part is so boring. But I will tell you, I'll try to show you a clip here of something I was just recently painting. The things you need to look for are like little spots and specks that are probably like spilled drinks or things like that from over the years of a piece of furniture being in a house. And if you don't clean those off with something like Simple Green, which you, you can mix uh, fairly thin and then spray it on, clean it off, and then you need to, to wipe it off with a wet sponge or a wet rag so that the residue doesn't stay on there. But that will get off those kinds of things that end up, they don't, you almost don't see them before you paint it, but afterwards they can bleed through and cause problems that are very hard to fix. So make sure you're cleaning it well. All right, tip number two is recognize where you need to do prep, more prep than just a little bit of scuff sanding or a little bit of cleaning. And that would be stain blocking. When there's things on there that may bleed through and cause problems, you can stain block just in certain areas if it's a piece of furniture that doesn't seem to have a lot of problem areas, but knowing what those are is important. So if there's something like ink or marker or something that's been put on there from the past, those are, really tend to bleed through a lot. And the other things that bleed through the most are like either dark sap or tannins. Sometimes if you've sanded through like a, a really old stained piece and you've, you've disturbed the clear coat and there's some old stain underneath those old stains a lot of times, were made with like really kind of dark pigment bodies and they may bleed through too. So if you're if you've unearthed the stain level someplace, you might need to to spot treat that a little bit to make sure that you have a, a barrier that keeps it from bleeding through, especially if you're painting something in a light color. It's when you're painting it white or a light color that those things tend to bleed through and give you problems. So you just want to plan ahead for that. Secondly about spot treating for, for bleed through. If you're painting a dark piece of furniture, like say a dark wood piece of furniture, I'll try to show this one here that I'm doing, and you're painting it with another dark color, you don't really want to put white primer on it. You want to keep it as dark as possible. You have less work. If you're going from a dark color to a dark color, you don't want to put a light color in the middle of it and then have to try and get it dark again. So uh, there are a few products that are made. And it's just good to know about these in a case like that. I'll, I'll show you here. Dixie Bell makes one that is, it is a stain blocker specifically made for that. It's called Boss, but it comes in a clear version. So it'll block the stain, but without making your project white in all those spots. If you're not going for a light color or a white color, you don't want to put a bunch of white primer on it. The other thing you can do is you can get some kind of primer and have it tinted to like a medium gray color and then you could use it for everything that you're tint everything that you're priming that's not going to be like a light or a white color. The other thing you can do for priming in a way that's clear is if you want to spray some shellac. There's spray shellac that you can buy and that it dries kind of just a yellowish clear color. It's see-through and you can use that in spot areas to treat to keep bleed through from happening. So those are your choices as far as if you don't want to add white primer onto something. My third hack that's also about prep work is about scuff sanding. So we talk about chalk paint not needing a lot of prep. That's one of the beauties of it. It's true. You don't need a lot, but if there's something that's particularly slippery, um, it does need to get scuffed up so that the paint can stick to it. And uh, all of it could use a little bit of scuff sanding. You don't have to do a lot. You can go over it pretty quickly, but particularly areas, if you find, I have a bookshelf I've been painting this week that has, it's like laminate for the back part and for the shelves. The front of it is solid wood. So those parts, they're more slippery and they're gonna need a little bit more scuffing, a little more prepping to make sure that the paint will stick and that it won't chip off or, or come off easily. So scuff sanding, you just need to do a quick version of it, but one way, if you don't have all the fancy surf prep sanders and stuff like that, it helps to get a sanding block that is spongy and that is flexible, or especially for curved like uh, 
woodwork that's the trim work and stuff it helps to get something like even just an inexpensive sanding disc pad get a few of those and have them on hand because they can curve easily into the shape you want to sand uh, in curves that go in and out or you can fold them in half and then easily easily sand the the little small pieces and corners so that's a good hack if you have a sanding disc i have a sanding and random orbital sander that i use for just sanding the flat surfaces but then i'll take one of the extra sanding pads and use that in the curves and the weird little places like that and it works well all right when it comes to actually starting to put the paint on your project after you've done your prep work to save yourself some grief one of the hacks that i have that's an easy and inexpensive one is to Use water if your chalk paint is having too much drag and is hard to go on. Um, and one of the cheapest ways to do that now is to get some Dawn Power Wash if you're using that in your, in your kitchen. Once you're through with that, don't throw the bottle away. Rinse it out and put water in it and then you'll have a free mister. And misters work better than regular sprayers because if you're, if you're painting a project and you're having trouble getting the paint to flow very well, it's quite helpful to spray water onto it as you're going, but it helps if it's a mist instead of like big splats of water, which can kind of mess up your surface. So grab yourself a, one of those Dawn power washers and put some water in it. It's a, it's a good mister to use. Okay, happy Halloween, everybody. I had to go turn off the witch on my front porch because my office is right beside my front porch and there's an animatronic witch there who, for no apparent reason, just starts screaming periodically and scaring the crud out of me. <laughs> I turned her off. I, I may not tell them that I turned her off and we'll just see how long it takes until they notice. <laughs> Hack number five. I've talked about this in another video, but uh, to help the paint to go on smooth, uh, it, it's great to get a high density foam roller, just one of those little ones. They're white and they're like hard foam and they're, they're quite smooth when they go on. This is a good thing to use if you're painting kitchen cabinets or something like that. One of those small foam rollers, it really does work better for woodwork than something with a lot of nap because it will be smoother. But one thing you can do is have a paintbrush in one hand and then just go over it with the roller after you've finished that coat of paint to smooth it off. And that helps get rid of the brush marks if you're really trying to have that smoother look that doesn't show brush marks. Another hack I have for painting vertical surfaces particularly is, um, now chalk paint is pretty thick so it won't always give you this trouble, but when you're painting with regular paint it can be quite runny and if you're holding your paintbrush like this on a vertical surface that's when it drips down toward your hand and toward the floor and makes a mess and drips on your project. So when you're starting, especially after you first dip your brush and before it ends up fully loaded with paint, try turning your brush over and painting with it angled down and that way you won't have drips coming back all over your hand and all over the floor and the piece of furniture. Just paint it. I'll see if I can I'll show video of me doing like turn it upside down and paint it that way. Then you also want to, to get things smooth to do long smooth strokes after you finish covering an area. Long smooth strokes to kind of even things out all going in the direction of the grain. Okay hack number seven maybe this is seven. If, if you are already starting on a project and you're having trouble getting your paint to stick, even if, if it's not chalk paint, but you thought the paint you were using would work and it's just not adhering as well as you'd like, all is not lost. You can do a little bit of a hack to try and get the paint to stick better. It's basically transforming normal paint into something more like chalk paint. And what you can do is you can add some calcium carbonite to it. That's something you can order that's, that's not too hard to find, but you probably won't source it locally. It's something you would need to have on hand or to place an order for. The other thing in a pinch is you can use like talcum powder, thing, even you know baby powder, because talc is a kind of additive that you can put in there to make the paint more chalky, to have more body, and to make it stick better. So you can try one of those two things and see if that will make it adhere better as you're working. One thing that the, the products that work best to make it more like chalk paint and stick more, they also will lighten it a little bit because they are, they're kind of white, they're chalk, they're basically like chalk. And so they may lighten it a little bit. So be aware of that if you do add it to a project. I mean, if you're adding it to white paint, it won't make a noticeable difference. In fact, it'll give it a little more opacity and a little more body, which can be a good thing. But uh, if you're adding it to a dark color, it may lighten it a little bit. But that takes me into my next tip, which is 
it's good to pick a color or mix a color that's like a tiny bit lighter than what you're envisioning the end product to be. Just keep in mind that with chalk paint, you do need to seal it. And when you either wax it or clear coat it with polyurethane, it usually will darken it slightly. So it'll be a little bit darker than it was when you finished it and it dried. So if you added some talc or some calcium carbonate, which lightened your color a little bit, then when you go through and clear coat or wax it, you actually may get back pretty close to the color you initially had. And my final hack is really just some advice that after you paint the piece and let it dry, you need to be careful for the next 24 hours to several days because the paint is still curing. Just be aware that even when it's dry, it's not fully hardened yet for a little while. And so if you, if you're somebody who's trying to flip furniture, obviously as soon as it's dry, you wanna take pictures of it so that you can get it up for sale and try and sell it. But one thing I would recommend is if you're gonna, if you have a dresser and you're gonna put items on it, like a vase or something, put a little felt or something soft underneath there um, when you take the picture. And then for sure, just take it off quickly. Don't leave it on there. You know, if you're like, oh, that's pretty. Okay, I'm gonna leave that set up while I go list my item. It, it may end up getting stuck and damaging the paint when you pull it up. So. Make sure that you give it some time to cure. And when you're selling it to someone, if you sell it quickly, let them know also, be a good steward of this piece of furniture that you just painted. Be careful with it when they're moving it and then be careful with it for the next few days because the paint will continue to harden and get much more strong and sturdy, especially if you use some kind of polyurethane or clear coat on it. And just be careful with it for a few days to protect it and get it to its maximum strength so that it will be sturdy and last a long time for them. All right, guys, I hope those hacks are helpful. I tried to blow through them without getting too chatty, but you know me, I can talk about paint for a long time. I love paint, I love painted furniture. I do have below, in a, as a freebie for you, a furniture flip pricing worksheet. If you're interested in that, go check it out below in the link and you can get some ideas of different structures for how to price a piece of furniture when you're trying to sell it. All right, until next time, see you then, bye-bye.